these speakers have an overwhelming number of reviews on Amazon. At the moment, they're sitting at 2,999 reviews in total. And they've got an overwhelming 4.5 out of 5 stars. So they must be good. Well, I'm going to find out. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. Now, I've bought these for one very particular reason. I am actually going to rip these apart and build a TV cabinet with some built-in speakers. But today, I'm going to take a look at the sound quality to see whether or not it is worth me using these speakers in that build. And whether or not... I will tear them apart, because if they're very good, I might not tear them apart. Now, there is a bit of a knock in the box here, which I'm a bit disappointed with. Hopefully, that hasn't damaged the actual speakers in transit. But what we need to do is get them open. Now, these are the Edifer R1280DB. Not exactly the most memorable name or branding in the world, but I don't really think that matters with the overwhelming number of positive reviews on Amazon. And not just that, there's video after 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 video of reviews on these things. So they must be good. I don't know why I've never heard of them before. Okay, they come in two different colours at the time of this review. They come in like a wood colour, which is the ones that I've hopefully got inside this box. And they also come in black. Uh, it doesn't really matter for me if I'm going to tear them apart, but I chose wood in case I do decide to keep them. Okay, that is a chunky piece there. It's relatively heavy. I wouldn't say it's super, super heavy. A remote coaxial, possibly 3.5 mil there. We've got a few different bits in here. Where's the power? Oh, the power's on the back already. Okay, built-in power. That's good. Might make me tearing it apart a bit more difficult. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, they look all right. They look all right. Although, immediately out of the box, it seems like I've got a bit of glue sort of coming out of mine. Is it the same on this one? I must admit, they look better in the pictures, I think. There's a bit of glue that seems to be hanging off here that's kind of like a bit unfinished. Uh, I'm not massively happy about that. I mean, again, it doesn't particularly matter too much to me, but it's a bit annoying. You know, you're paying for a product. Now these, in terms of price as well, are only £119 at this moment in time. So they're not massively expensive. You can pop these off, supposedly. Pop those off and chuck those over there. That looks a hell of a lot better. Very retro looking. I quite like that. So whilst I get the finishing touches on the setup, let's run through the specs of these supposedly incredible speakers. The speaker grills aren't to my taste, so ripping them off reveals some hefty equipment. Above the shiny head of a logo, there's a four inch bass driver and a large hole to accompany it, a 13 millimeter tweeter and an infrared receiver for the remote. This lock combined means that it can really pack out quite a punch. On the rear is the real piece de resistance. This thing has a helpful amount of connections, optical, coaxial, Bluetooth and two RCA inputs. The control is done in two ways, either through the onboard control unit with the built-in EQ for bass and treble, or alternatively through the remote, which is far smaller than anticipated and I'm 100% going to lose that down the back of the chair. Now on the side we've got the treble and the bass setting, I've left that at zero, I've not changed that at all. This is on quite low volume I think. Okay, it's quite quiet. Let's turn it up a little bit. Okay, not quite what I expected. Not quite what I expected. Let's try and change the song. Something a little bit more 
uh, I don't know, engaging. And what I'll do as well is I'm going to put the treble up slightly and the bass as well. A couple of people have recommended doing that. So I'll put the treble and bass up slightly. Let's have a look and see how this performs. Oh, that is an instant. Wow, that bass is strong. Well, I'm going to try and take this up now to full volume. They kick out something chronic. That's actually a very nice sound, especially at higher level. Let me twist them round so you can hear this a little bit better. volume up a little bit as well. They are really good. turn that down well do you know what actually wow I can now see why people recommend these these are incredible since filming the unboxing I've discovered a few things about these particular speakers I think you should come with me and we'll have a further chat over the following week, I used these speakers in a number of different ways, primarily by connecting them to the TV, and that's because if I was going to dismantle them and use the insides to build my TV cabinet, I wanted to make sure that the actual TV functionality of the speakers was going to be okay. And I encountered a couple of little things that now, I should probably discuss. The first issue was something I came across that I didn't consider when buying the speakers themselves. They don't support Dolby Digital. So if you're trying to output through the optical audio using Dolby Digital, it just won't work. You have to set your TV into PCM setting for that to work. The next thing I found is the vocals. When you're using this on a TV, I felt that the vocals were a little bit muddy. It does a great job at the bass, really good at loud volumes, and it's very, very good with music and soundtracks especially. However, when it actually came to the vocals, I just felt that they weren't as prominent as other speakers that I've tested in the past. So they're not, I would say, personally, the best TV speakers I've ever tried ever. Don't get me wrong, they're good. They're very good. And for the price... 120 pounds they're okay but they didn't blow me away when plugged into my tv but that didn't stop me from dismantling them anyway so with that said this is what i've done with those speakers you know me by now i like things with an older aesthetic possibly even a bit rustic one of my biggest pet peeves is when we let tech define the aesthetic well, I wanted to do the opposite and control how my tech looks to bring a little bit of the old world rustic to a modern set of speakers. 
Okay, fine. Tearing them apart may have changed the intended sound from the manufacturers. And I know that some of you out there are probably tearing at your hair whilst watching this, condemning the heresy I've created and pointing out all of the mistakes I've made. Well, good job you don't live in my house, because if you did, I'd slap you with the back of my hand and tell you to get a grip. My house, my speakers, my style. And it didn't cost a great deal to do it. So it's time now to conclude my thoughts on the Edifer 1280 DB as standard, not necessarily as my modded speaker TV cabinet. They're good. They're not the best speakers I've ever heard. Absolutely not. However, they are good. I wouldn't say, though, that they're amazing for the price. I think they're probably priced maybe a little bit high. Do I regret my decision to use those speakers in the build? No, not really, because they weren't massively expensive, and if something went wrong, I wouldn't have been as upset as if I'd spent two, three hundred pounds on a set of speakers. However, would I rush out and buy these again? I hate to say it, it's unlikely that I would. I just don't think that the clarity is there. And for the price of £120, I'm sure there's some far better speakers available. And maybe even if you stretch a little bit further, I'm sure you can get some fantastic speakers that can do almost a similar amount of stuff. The one thing that I would say they have got well is the vast amount of connections on the back. That is something they have done extremely well. So they are a very versatile set of speakers. But for audio quality versus price... I wouldn't rush out to buy them again. And that concludes today's episode of Stu's Reviews. Guys, thank you very much for joining. If you liked today's video and you found it helpful, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. I know this video probably will have shocked a few of you who are coming and expecting the Edifer 1280DB speakers to be in pristine condition at the very end of this episode. And again, I apologize for that shock, but they're not. They're in a lovely TV cabinet that I've made, in my opinion. But other than that, I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.